but we have staggered POs coming into Seattle um, that are supposedly going to fill, but we don't really know until we know. We don't know it's a full PO until it lands and until everybody's uh, signed that bill of lading. Welcome back to the Food Service Distribution Podcast. I'm your host, David Layton. Today, I'm going to be talking about the COVID-19 virus, uh, specifically its effects on the food service industry and the restaurant industry, uh, imported products like paper and disposable coming out of China, and what all of this might mean for you as a restaurant operator or a manager or even a professional in the food service industry, um, what it all means, what it means for your sales and for your bottom line. So I wanted to start with two pieces of positive news. I've been talking with manufacturers and importers and redistributors, um, warehousers, a lot of people who handle in paper and disposable products, and they actually were anticipating a delay before the virus outbreak. Uh, let me explain. Every January, late January to early February in China, there is an event called the Chinese New Year. It usually shuts down business manufacturers for about two weeks and causes anywhere between two to eight weeks delay on product. So a lot of people who have been in this business anticipate every year there's going to be a slowdown around this time. Uh, and they order up heavy in uh, around August, September, the year prior, get their POs in line. And then when January rolls around, they already have uh, three to four months worth of product. So luckily, uh, we did a lot of that, and we haven't run into shortages yet, um, but we are certainly watching POs coming over closely. So the second piece of good news that we're hearing again here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, down the West Coast also, we have distributor partners that have been reporting the same thing, that restaurants are showing the same year-over-year -year sales. So consumers are changing their habits a little bit where they're not dining in restaurants, they're uh, ordering takeout or getting delivery services, but consumers are still ordering from restaurants um, the same in, in the same uh, frequency that they were this time last year. So even though people are staying home a lot more, um, a little more scared to go out into public places and go to a dining room, they are still consuming uh, quick service, and uh, restaurants at the at, at a similar rate. So that's positive. That's really good news. Um, one piece that is, I would say, probably neutral news is that the uh, ships that bring imports over to America are a little bit behind schedule. So nobody wants to send a ship from uh, China to Seattle or China to Portland or um, Florida if it is not full. So we're seeing ships delayed by a few days up to a few weeks, depending on the product, depending on the exporter and um, the importer. So that will probably cause more delays, um, but I'm, I'm going to do a follow-up on this. I might even do a micro series, depending on how long this lasts, uh, because we have POs scheduled to land in Seattle on the 6th, which is tomorrow. Um, on the 12th and the 19th. So we have staggered POs coming into Seattle um, that are supposedly going to fill, but we don't really know until we know. We don't know it's a full PO until it lands and until everybody's uh, signed that bill of lading. Being a distributor, what you're going to want to do, or if you are a distributor, is reach out to your um, local redistribution center or local importer or warehouser um, and see if they've had any concerns with the specific lines that you buy. This is just a overall view of what we're seeing in the Northwest, but uh, wherever your region is and whatever your specific product is, you might have get a little bit uh, different feedback. Um, so items, to switch gears a little bit, the items that we're seeing, um, napkins have been a huge concern, gloves have been a huge concern, portion cups, um, cups and lids. Uh, have been a concern as well. Um, we were looking also at uh, containers, three hinge containers. Um, those are really the ones that stick out above the rest. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. I just wanted to give a quick, quick update on kind of what we're seeing 
and what you can look out for. Um, if you are a restaurant that has been thinking about getting into the uh, delivery service game, there's a there's never been a better time to jump in. You might think the market is saturated with options, um, but it's it's good for consumers to have those three types of options when they want to eat uh, your specific type of cuisine, and that is of course showing up in person, dining in. Um, that is placing an order ahead of time and then taking it to go or eating it in and then also being able to order it on their phone or computer from their living room and having it delivered. So there's there's a, that that a triangle of options for consumers. That's what a lot of people are asking for. Uh, I don't see that trend turning around at all. I see it actually um, gaining a lot of momentum as things like this happen. This is a perfect example uh, of being in a... Uh, situation that is keeping people from going out into public. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but there are plenty of things, uh, storms and weather conditions, types of, I mean, just cold days. There are a lot of reasons why consumers do not want to leave their house uh, and they, they want their food delivered. So something to think about. Um, that's it. I'm going to do a update here in a few days and hopefully things are good. We have these two, three large POs coming in in the next two weeks. And I will certainly wrap back around and record another quick video when that happens. Um, last final thought that I would uh, leave you with is start distributors, start having those conversations with your customers, um, with your restaurants. What are you guys going to do if people stop showing up entirely? What are you going to do if workers can't come in? Uh, and if people are being told, like how in California this morning, uh, we were told that they're in a state of emergency. So if the situation escalates any further, people will want to, will, will not be able to or not want to actually go out in public at all. So start having those conversations. I don't want to pull any, uh, I don't want to be, be a, a fear monger or a, um, just a, a pessimist. I do think that everything's going to be fine. We're going to get through this. Um, but those are things that you might want to start thinking about conversations you might want to start having. Uh, and restaurants, start asking your distributor, hey, what am I ordering that's being imported, if you don't already know that? And what challenges do you see in the pipeline? And then what substitute items do you have? What subs do you have for gloves and, and straws and cups and lids and napkins and, and things like that? So um, have those conversations. Uh, better to have a plan in place and not have to use it than to scramble and try to jump on the, I don't know, the sanitizer bandwagon. If you saw on Amazon lately, sanitizer is going for like 300 bucks a bottle, which is crazy. All right, that's it. Uh, I will follow up in a few days. Uh, be safe out there. And thank you so much for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this, uh, give me a like or a follow, share it. And if you would like to see something different, let me know. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, at DMLate, and at Food Service Pod. Just created that one. Surprised I got it. Um, that's it. Take care. Peace.